Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope everybody had a good holiday season, have had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So with the holidays over, it's time to get back to making some projects. Uh, today, if you look on the video, you'll see on my work table, we've got a whole bunch of things laid out here. What we're going to make uh, today is we're going to uh, do some fused glass. We're going to first slump whatever we make. And then we're going to do what they call draping. We're going to put it over a, a mold and drape it. Uh, the slumping mold looks like this. So this is what it that looks like. So we'll put a, a round disc on that and we'll slump it. it. Takes about 1400 degrees to slump it down tight on this, this one here. And then after it's flattened out, we'll turn it over and we're going to put it on this little mold right here. This is a what we're going to call a draping mold. Basically, it's actually a terracotta planter. And all I've done is drilled some vent holes in it. I uh, have a little piece of fire paper across the top to uh, keep uh, your uh, glass from sticking to it. So anyway, we'll go from there. Uh, we're going to use, uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to make four dishes. They're about four and a half inches in diameter when they're done. Uh, we made these for Christmas and uh, had candy kisses in them. We gave them to our friends and our neighbors. And my wife said, you know, those come out really nice. Maybe you ought to do a video on it. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to start over here. We're, we're, going to, we're going to make four different ones. We're going to make two that are clear. I'm just using a ripple glass because that's what I have right now. This is a code 96. Uh, we're going to cut it into a six and a half inch circle. So I've got two of these. We're going to, we're going to paint one and we're going to use what they call frit on one. Frit is basically just ground pieces of glass. Uh, it comes in a powder. And then it comes fine, medium, and coarse. Now we're going to make one on an opaque piece of glass. Not my favorite color, but we've got it, so we're going to use it. And then the last one we're going to do is going to be on a another piece of, this is a piece of water glass. And it's a kind of a streaky black. We'll put some, uh, some stringers and so forth on it. The stringers are these over here. Uh, they look like this. These flat ones are called noodles. They're just flat pieces of glass. We just break them off by hand and we'll take and put them onto our project. And these little guys here are called stringers. Uh, they're all come in all different colors, all different sizes. And the one we paint, we're going to use our, our glass line paint again. This is the same as we used for uh, the, uh, the pinwheel that we did with the, uh, the, the wind chimes that we did with the pinwheels on it where we made the glass. So we're going to do that. So anyway, uh, this kind of gives you an idea what we're going to do. We're just going to use a regular uh, white Elmer's glue to uh, glue our project together as far as before we fire it. And uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and get ready to get started on it. So anyway, I'll move all this stuff out of the way. First thing we're going to do, we're going to cut these all into circles. And uh, uh, they'll be, like I said, six and a half inches across. Our slumping mold measures six and a quarter but before we slump it we're going to put all the decorations on it and we're going to fuse it and every time you do that it shrinks a little bit and this will shrink about an eighth of an inch and i like to have a little bit of overlay over my slumping mold because when it goes ready to slump it'll start to shrink a little bit so that'll be just about the right size on it so we'll be back in a minute i'll get all this out of the way and we'll get our our cutter out and we'll go show you how to cut some circles and from there, we'll go ahead and we'll pick a color and we'll start to, to uh, decorate it. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we've got everything all cleared off here. So now we've got our glass back here. Uh, these, these glass pieces are cut at 7-inch squares. Uh, we're going to take a, a, a what they call a circle cutter. It's got a suction cup on it. We're going to line it up in the center here. And we're just going to check it against the edge. This is set at uh, just about 6.5 inches. So I want to check on each side here. Make sure that it's going to be right. This needs to come in just a little bit right there. Should come in about maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around. That'll work. Push it down and push it down tight. And then before you, before you cut it here, uh, have a little piece of terry cloth right here. It's, been, it's, soaked, it's soaked in uh, glass cutting oil. And I'm going to put that cutter on it right like this. And I'm going to take and I'm going to move it around on my glass here. 
So I'm just going to put a little film of cutting oil down there. And then to cut this, start over, start right about here. And you can just take and come on around with your cutter. When you hear it kind of make a grinding so sound, that means you've come across where you started. So don't go on from there. You, it, you, it doesn't make any difference if you start going around and around and around. All you're going to do is mess up your cutter. So once around is all you need. In the center here now, I usually take and mark that with a, with a, a, a Sharpie. That way, when I start to decorate it, I know that this is where the center of this is at. So I'll show you what I mean when we get ready to move this on. Okay, do it just like that. So we're going to pull up our suction cup. Here's the cutter wheel right here. You can see how it, it swivels here. Suction cup just sucks down onto the glass. So now there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. Uh, you can use, uh, we're going to, we're going to cut some, some lines in it and I'll show you what we're going to do. Uh, some people, uh, We'll take and tap this out with a pair of, uh, uh, with its old fashioned uh, glass cutter. What we're going to do, we're going to use our, we're going to use our running pliers. And what we're going to do, we're going to come right in here. We're going to go up against where, all right. So I've taken the, after we, after we made our scribe or we scored our cutting circle here, uh, I took it off. Wiped off the excess oil here so I can see where the line is. And I put some little marks here around it because with the clear glass, sometimes you can't see where you've actually made the score line. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our cutter now and we're going to move it up right against the score of where the mark is here. And we're going to just make some tick marks here. All right, we're back to the original. Then what we can do, we'll just take our running pliers here and we'll just stick it in here and we'll just go ahead and we'll just give it a little bit of pressure right here and move it around here just to see it crack right there. Come down here a little bit more. Make sure I'm in the camera here. Nope. And there's our circle. Uh, if you want to, you can run it around on a grinder real quick and knock off any sharp edges. When we fire it, all these edges will go smooth, so it's not really necessary. But anyway, that gives you an idea of how we're going to do that. So we'll cut, we'll cut all these circles up, and then when we come back, I think what we'll do, we'll start with this one here, and we'll decorate this one. Uh, we'll do it with the frit to start with. I'm going to show you how to use all of these different materials, so uh, that'll be uh, uh, give give you a good idea and. Uh, Maybe uh, later on after we get them all done, uh, if you'd like to send me a comment, you might tell me which one of these you like best. And uh, so anyway, uh, I'll take it. I'm going to hit this with a grinder really, really light. And when I come back, we'll have it set up and we'll go ahead and we'll we'll put our frit on here. And we're going to put the frit on uh, just using a little plastic spoon. I'll show you how we do that. So we'll be right back. All right, we're back. I just took and touched up the, the edges here just a little bit with our grinder. So uh, we know that it's nice and round. If it's not perfectly round, you'll be okay because uh, when we distort the uh, the bowl, when we uh, when we slump it, and also when we drape it, uh, it'll hide any imperfections as far as the circles. There's a a couple more things we need to do here. First of all, I'm going to put this on a piece of what they call fire paper. Uh, the fire paper is uh, just you use this in the kiln to uh, keep it from sticking to the kiln shelf. It's just gonna, we're just gonna put it on here right, just like that. And uh, what we'll do with that, we'll just take our Elmer's glue. I could decorate this on either side, the smooth side or the ripple side. When we fire this, the ripples are gonna probably almost disappear anyway. Uh, let's try it. We'll go ahead and turn this over and uh, we'll put this, uh, we'll put it with the ripple side up. This is, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put frit on this one here. 
So uh, all we need to do is uh, go ahead and we'll just take and put a couple dots of white glue around here. You don't need a whole lot of it. And we're going to put it down here now. And we'll just stick it on here like that. Okay, now, because we're going to use the frit, which is this, these guys here, uh, we're going to take and we're going to uh, use a plastic spoon. They make all kinds of little things to put this stuff on. I found a plastic spoon works just fine. And so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to take it and uh, we're going to put it in a pie pan. So we'll just lift this up now. I'm going to put it in a pie pan just so it'll catch any excess uh, frit so we don't lose it all. We're going to set it on here. Then the next thing we're going to do so that it doesn't fall off the edges, I'm going to take my white glue and I'm going to build a little bit of a dam all the way around here. Right against the edge. This will keep the frit from falling off the edge when we start to fire it. And the frit we're going to put on here, we're going to put it all on at random. So there'll never be two just like this one. Just put a little bead around here. Just like that. And then we can start off with any, any color we want. So... Uh, Let's go ahead and we'll start with the orange one, right? This is a light orange. Just take and uh, take your spoon, put it in here. We're gonna put it right over that, right over our area where we've where we've uh, put the uh, glue on the edge to make our dam. Depending on how thick you put this on, it will depend on how dense it will be. Otherwise, these, these are transparent colors. So that's enough of that one. I think we're going to put some uh, sunflower on it now. So let's just take a little bit of sunflower here. And we'll put a little bit of sunflower up on it. We'll just let them roll on top of it. Just like this. Here again, this is uh, up to you how, you how you put it on here, how much you want to put on. We got some on here. This is called uh, Amazon Green. So let's put a little of that on there. So these are fun to do like this because you never know exactly how these are all going to turn out. It's going to be like Christmas when we when we get it all fired. And let's put a little bit of Amazon Green down here just for the heck of it. All right, we've got some turquoise here. So let's put some turquoise on this project. Like I say, uh, the reason I had the pie pan there is to kind of catch some of the uh, some of the frit so it doesn't go all over your work table. After you play with this for a while, you'll get a feel for how much you want to put on it. Uh, if you put it on real, real heavy, it'll be uh, more opaque. If you put it on real light, it just be it will just be a sprinkling of it. So we want to be sure that we get a got to get enough on here. All right. And then we've got here we've got a uh, purple. It's actually called hydrangea, so kind of a purple looking one here. So let's just finish it off with this purple one. Now, unfortunately, because of the size of my kiln, I can only fuse these one at a time. So anyway, what we'll do, we'll go right from here and we'll put it in the kiln. So I'll take it up. Uh, uh, Get the camera down and we'll go ahead and I'll put it in the kiln and then we'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's in the kiln. Around the outside edges here, I'm just going to take a little paintbrush here and, and, and clean that up. 
So I'll show you here what we're going to do. Just grab a little paintbrush here and come down right around here and just kind of clean this up. And your pie pan can catch it. Unfortunately, uh, this, uh, this will mix all these colors up. Uh, I've tried to save these from time to time and use the mixture of colors uh, in another project. And to be honest with you, it comes out kind of muddy looking. So sometimes there's uh, so you're just gonna you're just gonna lose some frit when you when you do it like this. But uh, sometimes that's the cost of uh, of making something like this, where you're just letting it, where you don't have any borders to hold it in there. You could probably run a piece of uh, uh, tape around there, but the problem is, if you run tape around there. How are you going to get it off before you fire? Because you don't want to put the you don't want to put the tape in the kiln, so uh, that's not a good idea either. You don't want to do that either. You don't want to disturb. I kind of got up on it there a little bit. You don't want to disturb your. All right, so that's going to be our first ball right there. So uh, let me uh, go offline real quick, and uh, I'll get our kiln opened up, and then we'll come back and I'll uh, put it in there. So we'll be right back. All right, so we've got our plate all ready now. So now we're going to just take it with our fire paper here, and I'm just going to very carefully transport it over to our kiln shelf right here. And uh, this is why I have the paper, so I can handle it without touching the edges of it. So from here, we're just going to take and we're going to take it and put it in the kiln. Like I said before, this is just a little bit too big to get two of them on here, so uh, we'll have to do one at a time. So uh, let me uh, just step away for a minute, and we'll put it in the kiln. Okay. All right, so we've got our plate in the kiln now. So now we'll go ahead and we'll uh, set our uh, firing settings to fire it. We're going to go up to a maximum uh, fusing temperature of 1,475 degrees. Then we'll go through all the other steps to come back down. So uh, this takes quite a while. So uh, this process is one of those where it's kind of like uh, it's a hurry up and wait type uh, project. So this will take three different fu uh, fuses. Uh, it'll be this one here, which is going to fuse it permanently to make it into one single dish. Then we'll put it on the slumping mold and we'll turn it into a slump. And then we'll turn it over and we'll put it on the draping and we'll turn it into our dish. So we'll be back after we get this uh, fired and we'll have one single piece of glass where the frit will turn into part of the base glass. So uh, we'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, it'll be in the morning before we can open this up. All right, well, we're back. Uh, the kiln dry is all cooled down now. So anyway, uh, we're going to open the lid and uh, we'll see uh, how our project came out. So let's go ahead and reach down here and we'll lift this up. And there's our fire disc right here. So uh, from here, it looks really nice. Um, I'll uh, go off camera real quick and get the kiln shelf out. And uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at it really close uh, outside. All right, I got our disc out here on the workbench now. Uh, so I'm real happy the way it came out. So uh, you can take a look at it, see how we'll come down here close and see how nice it's fused. By building that little dam around the outside edge with the uh, with the white glue, you can see that it fused right out the edge. Here's a little bit, got a little bit light right here. But uh, when we take and uh, uh, slump that, that'll, that'll disappear right here. There's a little bit of a piece of frit right here. So you want to be careful uh, when you get this out of here. Don't run your fingers along the edges here because the, if there's any frit like this hanging out, uh, they're just as sharp as a knife. So they'll cut you. I'll put this on the grinder and just hit this really, really light. And uh, then when we come back, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll put it up on the, uh, the slumping mold and uh, we'll get ready to slump it. So we'll be back and uh, we'll start the, the slumping process. Uh, it shrunk an eighth of an inch, so that's why I wanted to make it bigger. This is six and a quarter across here, so I'll just have a, just a little bit of an overhang on here. Before we put this on here, though, I'm going to uh, take some little fire paper here, and I'm going to put them on these little peaks right here. Uh, the reason for that is that they have a tendency uh, to uh, let the, because it'll, it's, it's going to sag down or slump down over these peaks right here, and sometimes they have a tendency to want to, uh, to get stuck on these. So we're going to just take and just take, take our white glue here. We'll just put a little stripe on here. 
just like this. Then we'll take our little piece of fire paper and we'll just stick them on here like this. If they hang, hang over a little bit, don't worry about it because the, uh, when, the, when the glass starts to slump, it'll fold them over. Now, whether this is necessary or not, I don't know, but I've always done it this way and had good luck with it. So I'm a big believer if you find something that works for you, uh, kind of stick with it. Uh, whether, whether it doesn't approve to with everybody, but uh, uh, if it works for you, I'd say go for it. All right. So we got it all on here now. And now right on the outside edge right here, I'm going to put a little dab of glue here. Got to open it up here. Here, here. And I'm going to take and put our glass disc on here. And this is just by feel because I won't be able to see it. So our glass dish is going to go, disc is going to go in here. And I'm going to try to feel it with my fingers here to see that I've got it as close to the center of this as I can get it. That looks pretty good right there. So we'll take and we'll slide that aside. We'll wait about 10 minutes before we put it in the kiln. And uh, we'll get ready to uh, fire it. So uh, at the end of this video, I'll give you a firing schedule for all the, uh, for the, for the full fuse, for the slump, and also for the drape. So, so uh, uh, be patient with that. We'll get you the uh, firing schedules for it. And uh, we'll go from there. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to take our uh, second uh, piece of clear glass. And that's the one we're going to paint on. So uh, I'll get all set up with our paints out. We're going to paint on the smooth side here. And we're going to do kind of like we did for the, uh, the wind chime pinwheel one. We're just going to run a, be a bead of paint across the top. And we're just going to pick it up and let it run down to the middle here. Because when this slumps down, it's going to be in the middle. So we'll want everything running from the outside in. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how, that, how that works out. So here again is one of these things. We never know exactly how this is going to do. I'm also going to put some black swiggles underneath here. Just a real fine line. Uh, same as we did on the wind chime also. So we'll be back in a minute. I'll get the paints all out and get them shook up. Uh, and then we'll go from there. All right, so we placed it in the kiln now. It's on top of our slumping mold. Basically what the slumping does, as we heat the glass up, the glass begins to sag and it will sag and take the form of whatever the slumping mold looks like. Uh, if you don't heat it long enough or hot enough, the, uh, it won't take the form properly and you won't get a really nice uh, uh, slump. So uh, I know 1400 degrees, which we're gonna use, is a little hot for some people, but uh, I found that works quite well. So we'll go ahead and uh, set up the uh, firing schedule on our, uh, our kiln and we'll go ahead and uh, get ready to fire that. So uh, we'll come back uh, in uh, probably the next tomorrow morning and we'll, we'll pull it out and show you how it's gonna look all slumped. So we'll be back in a minute here. All right, well, we're back at the kiln now. So this is, uh, I fired this last night, so it had all night to cool down. And so uh, now it's time to uh, go ahead and open it up. And we'll see what we've got here. So here we go. It's, it's kind of like Christmas. Here we go. And here's what it looks like. You can see that it took our flat disc. And now what it's done is it slumped it around our mold. So uh, we'll uh, take it off and get it up on the workbench. And we'll take a look at it. And what we're looking for is a nice uh, flat bottom on it. It looks like it did a really nice job. I've got a good edges all the way around. So we'll be back in a minute. Uh, the reason we want to let it cool down for so long, if you open this when it's too hot, it'll actually break it. So it'll get a shock and it'll break the glass. So just have patience and be sure to not open it before it's at least 100 degrees or less. So that's a good, good place to start. So we'll be back in one second here. Okay, so we got out here on our workbench. If you look really close here, you'll see we've got a, just about the same amount of shrinkage around the edges here, uh, which, uh, which is what we wanted. So now we'll just take and we'll lift it out of here. And what we're looking for right here on the bottom is we want a nice flat base. 
which we have right here. These little pieces of fire paper we put in there, uh, they just wash out with water. So now what we're going to do with this is we're going to take and we're going to put it on our draping mold upside down and we're going to drape this in to make our dish. So uh, I'm real happy with the way that came out. The colors look pretty on it. Uh, have a nice uh, look to them. So I'll get this all washed up and then we'll come back and we'll stick it on our, uh, our draping mold and we'll go ahead and put it back in the kill and we'll go ahead and fire it for the last time. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back. I got it all washed up now, so it's all clean. You see, we took all the fire paper off here, so we don't have any stuck on here anywhere. So now what we're going to do, so we're going to take this. Here's our draping mold. We're going to take our white glue, and we're just going to put a couple little, maybe about five little drops of glue here. The only reason I put the glue on it is because it helps hold it until it starts to sag. Uh, if you don't do this, sometimes when it starts to sag, it will shift on your mole and you'll get it so it doesn't come out even. It'll be all shifted to one side. Uh, it just creates a different effect, but it's not what I want. I want this to be as even as possible. So now we're going to take our, our dish and we're going to turn it upside down and we're going to set it on our draping mold just like that. I'm going to push down, make sure it's seated flat. And so what we'll do when we heat this now is that this is going to fall down over this mold and we will create the dish effect. So uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. I'll show you how it looks uh, with the with the uh, draping mold on it. And then we'll put it back in the kiln and we'll fire this time. This one here is going to be fired at 1220 degrees. And as I said before, I'll put the schedule at the end of the video. So for all of these, all four of these dishes that we're making, we're going to uh, fire them exactly the same way. I'm only going to show you how we're doing this one. Uh, the other three, I'm going to show you how we're going to how we decorated them. And then we're going to go through, we'll do a full fuse. We'll do the uh, slump fuse and we'll do the drape fuse to give the finished product. So, uh, after we uh, put the rest of them together. So we'll be back in a minute and we'll put this in the kiln and we'll get ready to go. Okay, so I'm back real quick. Uh, we uh, took and we glued this down to our draping mold. So this is what it looks like now. So gives you an idea. So this is going to fall down over this and we'll create a kind of a, a ribbon effect. So uh, the pot's got some little holes in it for venting. You notice I had a hole right here in the top. But uh, this came out real nice. Uh, this is what, like I said before, this is what you're looking like is for the, for the slumping. You want a nice, good flat bottom and you want good definition all in these tight areas here. So anyway, from here now, we'll take and we're going to put it in the uh, kiln. It'll go in just like that. Uh, I'll put it in and I'll give you a quick shot of it. And then we'll go ahead and set this, the uh, firing schedule for that one. And we'll be done with the whole project. So hang on a second. Okay, so I moved it over now into the kiln. Uh, I always kind of try to like put these things right in the middle since I can't put two of them in here. So anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close the lid on this. We'll go ahead and set the uh, firing schedule and it'll take a, uh, a few hours, uh, maybe uh, later this evening, maybe around nine o'clock or so. But right now it's about noontime in California, uh, about uh, maybe about nine o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock. It'll have cooled down enough where we can uh, take it out and we'll show you the finished product. And then we're going to move on to uh, finish up our uh, the other three as far as the decorations go on them. Like I said before, uh, we're not going to fire those in, on, on camera or do anything to them. They'll be done just exactly like this one's done. So, but uh, otherwise the video will run a really, really long time. We don't want to do that. So we'll be back when this has uh, been uh, draped and uh, we'll have our uh, candy dish all done. So we'll be back. All right, so the draping process is all done. The kiln is cooled off now. So. Let's open the lid and we'll take a look at our project here. So we'll get the lid open. And there is our bowl right here. So you can see when it went over the draping bowl, how it turned into a dish. So I'll pull it out here and we'll take a look at it real close. So here it is. So here it is out of the kiln. So I can just take and we'll just take and turn it over. You can see how that's closed in around the the uh, 
the draping mold here. So uh, let me stop it here for a second. I'll reposition my camera and we can take this right here and we'll pull that off. There's our first dish right there. So that's the one we made with all the different colors. Uh, this, this center section here just washes out like that. So that's the candy dish all made, made from that flat disc that we started off, which was just plain clear glass. So I'm real happy with the way that came out. And uh, we'll get the rest of them done. And uh, we'll show all of them to you uh, uh, when they're done at the end of the video. And uh, the projects will be done. So hope you follow along. Hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been fun to show you how to do this. All right, well, I brought the dish inside now. I got it all washed up. So uh, here's the finished product. So it came out very nice. So I hope everybody's been following along. So we'll go ahead and do the other three, and then we'll come back at the end of this video. We'll show all of them to you. So uh, keep on watching. Okay, I'm back. So I got our glass uh, paint all out here. So uh, we're going to start with it. We're going to lay down a little swiggle all over this thing with, uh, with our black, this one right here. Make sure it's shook up real well. These are water soluble so if you need to thin them you just thin them with a little bit of water and here is some little tips these are these are what size that the paint will come out we're going to use like the medium tip for this the little tiniest tip uh, it has to be really really thinned out for that one to work because that gets plugged up real easy so we're going to go with the medium one here i think it's this one right here so it's just a little tiny guy so has like a little pin that goes in the in the in the nozzle, so make sure it's opened up really good. And they self screw onto the lids here, so shake your paint up real good. Then we're going to take and screw this on. And I would recommend before you put it on your glass. Take it somewhere and just make sure it's doing what you want it to do. So that looks good. So we're just going to put it, this will be, come through on the back side. So it just kind of adds a little bit of a texture to it. And we're going to go in the center. Here again, you can do as be as artistic as you like, or you can be as creative as you like. Okay, that's good. Now, if you want to, if you're in a in a hurry and you want to kind of try to speed up the process, uh, we're going to do it here a little just for a minute here. Uh, I have a hair dryer, just a standard hair dryer, and I'm going to take and we're going to take and we're going to dry this a little bit. So that's not quite dry yet, but we'll let it uh, we'll let it sit for a little while. And uh, in the meantime, okay, so we got our black dry now. So we'll start with our first color. I think we'll start with this orange one right here. And we're just going to take and we're going to put a put it right on here. Put a pretty pretty good little batch right here. And we're just going to lift this up and we're going to let it flow. Right like that. And now here again, this is one of these things where you can just play with this all you want. You could actually paint this on with a brush if you're a good artist and you you have an eye for that I'm going to make this just real abstract so it's kind of just going to go all over the place like that now before we put the next color on here we want to be sure that's dry I wouldn't want them to intermix with each other I want to be sure this is opaque across the top here because when this fire is going to it's going to be transparent and when it, when it fires uh, you're going to lose some of the density of the color. So we want to do that. 
So we'll let this uh, we'll let this dry. It's going to be a little little drawn out process. So uh, I may add some more colors to it uh, on online here with uh, with everybody on the video, and then I'll go offline and finish it all up. But I just wanted to I'll put another color on here, and then we'll come back and uh, uh, put do the rest of it offline. Okay, we got our uh, black and orange are all dry now. So we're going to put on a second color. I think we'll use this little Kelly green one here. Uh, as I said before, you can decorate these any way you want. So let's put a little green right here. The green one seems to be plugged up here, so we'll have to take and run a a little wire through it. So, there it goes. There we go. It sometimes gets plugged up, so now we're just taking a little lift this up again. We'll let that green one run down. The green one was kind of thin, so we'll keep an eye on that. We'll probably add a little bit more right there at the top. Just right here, just a little bit more. You can kind of tap it down and let it to let it flow a little bit more. All right, that's good. Okay, so we'll go offline and we'll uh, uh, I'll put some more colors on it and then we'll come back and show you where we're at. Uh, no use to just watch me do this over and over and over. So uh, we'll be back as soon as we get a, two or three more colors on here. All right, well, we're back. We got our uh, <clears throat> disc all painted up now, so it came out really nice. I'm happy with the the combination here. And uh, here's what it's going to really look like on this side here. So you get a chance to see with the uh, little black streaks through it and so forth. And you get to see the colors. Uh, when we fire this, this, these colors will brighten up a little bit. Not a whole lot, but they will. So that completes the, uh, the decoration of our, fir our, our first disc, or in this case, our second disc. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll, move, on to, uh, uh, we'll move on to this green one next. This one here. I'm going to use the stringers and, uh, and noodles on this one here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here at the top and I'm just going to come straight down and I'm going to go all the way around the edge with all different lengths of uh, stringers and noodles and uh, put that put this one together. So this will be the next one we're going to decorate. And then we'll, at the end, we'll go ahead and we'll decorate this last one here. But uh, I'll get started with both of these. And then I'll finish them up, show you the finished product. And uh, then we'll come back and uh, I'll go ahead and... Uh, fire them all and uh, then we'll show them to you at the end of the video like i said if you want to uh, send me a, a, a comment uh, tell me which one you like the best and uh, we'll just take a little quick poll on it but so this will be the next one we're going to do we're going to decorate it in green blue and probably a yellow uh, noodle so uh, this uh, should come out kind of interesting uh, this has all the lines on here because I wanted to see some place where to start as far as uh, uh, checking out the lines. If you remember, I drew this circle uh, on the um, around the suction cup on our cutter, so that gives me the center. So to find the center, really easy, just draw down a couple lines this way, a couple this way, and that gives you the center for these lines going out here and here. So I'll go ahead and put another line across through here. And uh, when we come back, we'll start to glue down some. I'll uh, just get started, and then I'm going to go off camera. I'll finish it all up and then come back on and show you the finished product, kind of like we did with the painted one. And uh, then we'll go on and we'll do the black one. And like I say, we'll go ahead and fire them all, and then we'll come back and show you the finished product. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. So basically, we're getting ready to do our third uh, glass disc here. Uh, we did the... Uh, the first one with the frit, which we're uh, now uh, draping to make our bowl. Uh, we painted the one on it. And now we're going to uh, go ahead and we're going to 
uh, work on this green one right here. And we're going to use these noodles right here. Uh, they're just strips of glass. And we're going to put them down on here. Uh, we're going to put them at random. I'm going, to, I'm going to do some blue ones, some green ones. They're going to be all different sizes here. So the first group here we're going to put down here. I'm just going to take it and just take and snap this with my fingers like that. And you just take and put a little dab of glue where you want to put it. Just like that. Doesn't need a whole lot. So we're just taking, we'll set that right here. The lines I made with the magic marker, uh, they're fine. They'll burn, they'll burn off or disappear. So it's not a big deal. So I think I'm going to do the blue ones on these, uh, these straight lines right here. Here again, this is a, whatever you want to do with this. This is just an idea. Uh, you can do all kinds of different things with these. Just stick it on there like that. All right. If you break one off, it's a little bit too long. Don't worry about it. Let it hang over. And when we get it fired, it'll, uh, it'll just go around the edge there. And then what we'll do with that is we'll put it on the grinder and just straighten it up just a little bit. So it's not a really major deal here. So all of these fused glass uh, projects are kind of like uh, make whatever you want to with them. And uh, uh, however how it comes out, uh, you'll be really surprised. All right, so that's our blue ones there. Now what I think we're going to do, we're going to take some green ones here. And I'm going to break up right here. I'm going to just break up some different sizes. I don't care if they're longer or shorter. And what we're going to do with those. I'm just doing this at random. I'm not measuring them or anything. Uh, I don't really care how long they are. And what I'm going to do with those, I'm going to put one right in here next to this one right here. But I'm going to start them all at the top here. Just like this. I'm going to butt them together. So we'll just put one here. So I have no idea how this is going to work out, so we'll see. This is the kind of the fun part about doing uh, your fuse glass is uh, you can kind of just fool around with whatever you want to put on it here and see what happens to it. Okay, so you get the idea. This is what we're going to do with this. I'm going to I'll put the rest of the little green ones on it and then we'll I'll go offline and I'll finish it up. And when we come back, uh, I'll show you what we did with it. Um, I may even put a little bit of uh, yellow frit on this one here. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see after we get all our little green ones on here. Now what I'm going to also do here is uh, these lines that are going here, 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 and here. I'm going to put green ones on that. And then I'm going to reverse it and put the blue ones on each side of it. So... Uh, We'll just mix these all up as we go along here. All right, that gets us started here. So I'll go offline and start to fill this in. Uh, maybe I'll jump back in as we get a little bit further along. And uh, you can take a look and see how we're doing on our progress of this project. So we'll be back. All right, we're back. We got the, uh, the green one all striped up now. So we're going to do one more thing to it before we uh, before we fire it. I took a bunch of the 
little scrap pieces from our noodles and I just took and chopped them up and made me like a, a little bit of a frit right here. So I'm just going to shake this up in this little cup and we're going to just take and we're going to sprinkle them on here at random. So we're just going to sprinkle them in here. Just like that. So we just let them fall wherever they may. Here again, if you wanted to, you could put your little dam around the outside edge to keep them from falling off of there. But uh, I'm not going to do that on this one. They sell a frit kind of like this. They call it confetti. It's a whole bunch of different uh, colors. and uh, But it's easy to make. I just take a pair of old lead shears and put this over the top of a of a uh, plastic container and just take and cut it with the uh, shears and I just cut them at random so you can take your finger too if you have what somewhere it wants to keep falling off there just put your finger on there like right here just put your finger on here so it can't get off All right, that looks pretty good. I'll take a I'll take a little toothbrush, or not a toothbrush, a little paintbrush, and I'll go over here and I'll pick these all off of our stripes. So I'll I'll take and uh, push those out of the way onto the the body of the uh, area here where we're going to fuse in here. Uh, that way they won't be up on top of there. So anyway, that's the one for the uh, green now. Uh, the black lines that we put on there, they will burn off when you start to fire it. So uh, we'll go from there. So the last one we need to do is we're going to do the, uh, the black one now. This was the, the uh, water glass, kind of a wispy black on it. And I think we're going to do that one with, uh, we're going to do it with stringers. And we're going to make like a checkerboard on here. And uh, we may put some frit on it, or, or I don't know, maybe I've got some uh, dichroic glass. We haven't talked about dichroic. Maybe we'll put some dichroic glass on that one. So we'll be back when we get set up to do that one. And uh, we'll uh, get ready to, uh, to fire these. The one we're slumping right now is, uh, is still in the kiln. So I expect it to be out uh, in the next uh, couple hours or so. And uh, we will uh, show you it'll be the finished product. And uh, then we'll uh, move on from there to the next one. So we'll be back in a little while. Okay, so I'm back. I got the uh, I got the black one here all laid out. Now it's probably hard to see because it's got black lines on black. But what we're going to do with this one, we're going to make this one a dichroic one. And uh, just for fun, we're going to call this one confetti. So we're going to start with these little guys right here. They're like a little bit of a diamond. And we're going to put them down the center strips here, the main body here. And so we're just going to take and put a little drop of glue right there. And we're just going to line these up and set them in here like this. Just to line them up here about an eighth of an inch off the uh, base of the uh, edge of the glass there. So this will be kind of pretty with the black glass, with the uh, dichroic glass. Keep it kind of away from the edge there because uh, you don't want to be too close to where you're, you're going to have it. Uh, remember that, remember when, you, when we fire these, they'll start to shrink a little bit. We don't want these right on the edge of the project. All right. There's the first set. I'm going to run another set of those down here and right, right below it. So, uh, and then in the middle, of the, in the area here, we're going to put all the confetti colors in there. And we'll just put them in at random. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put another, another diamond right here.
And I think just for the fun of it, we'll turn this diamond sideways, maybe like that. Just to be different. Again, as I said before, this is the fun part about playing with these. You can just do anything you want to with them. Uh, sometimes uh, you do get a little carried away and kind of go overboard. Uh, the green one, uh, it's got everything but the kitchen sink on it. So that one kind of went a little crazy. So we'll see uh, we'll see how it fires and how it comes out. But uh, uh, they're all one of a kind. So they're all original. Uh, Whoops. It helps if you put them the right side up. So that's a that's a help helpful point here. Well that one doesn't want to go on there, does it? All right. So now we got a we got a, a group on here going sideways. So that all looks pretty good. Kind of evenly spaced there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're just going to go at random, and we're just going to uh, put some put some dots down here, and uh, we'll just go like this. And I'm going to take some tweezers here, and I'm just going to place this in here at random. It doesn't make any difference where they go. Uh, we're going to mix the colors all up. I'll turn them at different angles. So here again, uh, this will be pretty with that black against it, so it'll really stand out. And as long as the glue is a little bit soft, you can take and turn it around so you get to you get it to where wherever you want to make them, kind of like that. We'll go down here and put a couple down in here too. Anyway, I'll go offline and put the rest of the confetti on here. Uh, you guys get the idea. Uh, here again, I want to run the video real, real long. And uh, so uh, the next time you see this one, it'll actually be uh, draped into a dish and we'll show it right at the end of the video. So uh, that's how we're going to get started on that one. Okay, well, we're back. We got our black one all done now. So this is all with the dichroic. We'll pick it up here and show it to you real close. So uh, when this is fired, this will be really pretty. So we'll see how that one comes out too. So we've got the other three discs all made now. We've got the painted one. We've got the one with the stringers, the noodles, and some frit. And so now we've got the one with the dichroic. So uh, as I said before, the next time you see these, these will be made into candy dishes. We'll make them all just the same as we're doing on the uh, one that we currently have in the kiln. And uh, uh, we'll be back and we'll show you that one as soon as we get them all done. Well, just about the time you thought we were through making bowls, I decided to show you one more uh, technique. Uh, this one I've used uh, quite a bit over the years. And what we're going to do, we're going to take uh, some uh, water slide decals. These are uh, for uh, ceramics. And uh, we're going to put them on our uh, disc for our dish. And we're going to, we'll fire them onto there, which makes them permanent. And from there, uh, we'll go ahead and slump it and uh, make it into a dish. So I wanted to show you these real quick. Uh, when you buy them, they come with a protective coating on top of them. And you can just pull that off. It looks like this. So this will be the, this will be the decal we're going to put on here. I'm going to put three of them around here. They're going to be up here like this. I've put some little tick marks here to show me where these where these are going to go. So if you're not familiar with decals, you just put them in a in a in a pan with some lukewarm water. I'll move this out of the way for a minute, and then you just kind of spread them out a little bit. And what the water does is it releases it from the carrier paper that it's on and it'll leave the decal. And uh, so we'll let that soak just for a minute here. I usually, after you let it set for a little while, you can take and 
you can pick it up and you can feel it if it's loose enough, enough, enough yet. It's not, uh, it's not, so it hadn't released from the, from the backing paper. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put three around the outside edge. And then we're going to put one single flower right in the middle. So that will make kind of an interesting looking dish. So I figured since we've uh, showed you how to use the frit, how to paint one, how to use stringers and noodles, and how to use dichroic, might as well show you this one too. So we'll just throw it in here real quick. Still not quite enough. It's getting close. So I'm going to move the pan out of the way. I'll move our disc back over here. And it helps if you do a little prep before you get started. Take a couple pieces of paper towel, fold them up. And I'm just going to dip the leading edge here into the water. I'm going to use that. And then I have one that's completely dry right here. So, okay, so this is ready to slide off of here now. So you just take it and you just put it where you want to put it right here. And I know this pink's going to be very faded here, so that's all right. It's kind of what we're looking for. And I'm going to pull this away. And after you pull it away, you want to get all the bubbles out of it, and then just take your dry one and take and push it down here. You can still move it around a little bit until you until you get it set here. That looks pretty good. So there's our rose on here. You can see there's going to fade into this other pink, but that's okay. It'll be a real, really light, uh, kind of a ghosty looking pattern. So we're going to come around here. I'll put all the other two on here, and then I'll come back and we'll put the one in the middle, and then we'll get ready to fire this. So we're going to fire this at 1325 degrees. Uh, that works pretty good. If you see it has a little shadow around it, that'll burn that off. And uh, that'll make this completely uh, permanent on the glass. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, so I've got all the uh, decals placed on our on our uh, flat disc now. So uh, I kind of just put them on there and just kind of eyeballed them to get the kind of a feel for I want. So uh, we'll go ahead and fire these. And then what we'll do is we'll put them on our slumping mold, we'll slump them, and then we'll go ahead and we'll drape and we'll make another bowl. So next time you see this, it'll be into a bowl and we'll uh, see how it came out. So uh, this is just another technique. Uh, there's probably 10,000 different kinds of ceramic decals that you can buy. Uh, when, they, when they silk screen them, they're silk screened with glass particles. So when you fire them, the glass particles melt and become part of the glass. So it'll be permanent. They won't fade. They won't chip. So they'll be uh, just like part of the part of the base glass. Uh, so we'll be back. We'll see you at the end of this video. And we're going to have uh, all the bowls on display. And like I said before, uh, send me a comment and pick your pick the one you like best. Uh, we'll take a little unofficial poll and we'll see which one uh, people like the best. All right, well, we're back. We got all our bowls done now. So here's all our little candy dishes here. So uh, we'll take a look at each one. This is the one we started with at first. This is the one with the frit on it. So um, I love how the, uh, how the edges came out here with the pretty colors on them. So uh, happy with that one. It has a nice, uh, nice base on it. it. Has a good slump with a good bottom. So uh, I think that one came out nice. And then the second one we did is the one we did where we painted the glass. This one here again, quite different. Uh, I like the edges on this one too. It's got some beautiful turquoise right across here, around the edges here. You never know exactly how these are going to come out, so they come out really nice. So here's the back of it here again, a nice base on it and so forth. So anyway, that's the, the second one we did. And then the third one is the one where we use the noodles and the stringers. This is on that... Uh, the, that green glass, which I told you I didn't care for, came out pretty nice, though. So uh, this is a more um, uh, kind of uh, mechanical looking, but it uh, makes an attractive uh, dish here. And then we're going to go to the uh, dichroic one. And this one here really has a lot of pretty colors in it. All the dichroic glass 
here again got a nice fuse on the back of it and uh, so I'm happy with the way that one came out and then the last one we kind of snuck in we weren't going to do this one. this is the one with the fire fire decals on it this is the ceramic decals they've been fired to the glass so it gives you kind of a little ghost effect here there's one right here in the middle and I made them real faint like that because I didn't want them to be too uh, pronounced here again we got a nice bottom on that too so anyway this is a uh, just a, a little rundown on how the hell they came out uh, like I said before uh, if you guys want to send me a comment uh, let me see what which one you think is your favorite uh, we'll do a little unofficial polling with this uh, and uh, we'll uh, see which one uh, which one wins out anyway it was a fun project to do I hope uh, that uh, if you're into fusing you'll give that a try uh, have a funny little story to tell you about fusing. Uh, years ago, we lived in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and our granddaughters used to come out to visit. They were little, probably six and eight, and uh, they always liked to do a little project. So uh, one time when they wanted to do, they wanted to do something with fused glass. So uh, the uh, when I told them, I said we're going to put it in the kiln and we're going we're going to cook it. They said, why don't we just call that the cooker? So around our house, our kiln is basically the cooker. So it's just a little story to tell you about the kids and how they think about stuff. Anyway, I'm glad you followed along. I hope you'll uh, subscribe to my channel and I hope you'll uh, give these a try. They're a lot of fun to make. They make great gifts. They're all original. They're all one of a kind and you can do anything you want to with it. And if you don't want to put any embellishment on these at all, uh, when you're at the glass house, look for some Code 96 glass that has some pretty swirls or something in it. And uh, you can just take and cut a circle out of some really pretty glass and just uh, slump it, drape it, and uh, make your, make your uh, project out of something like that. So anyway, we'll be back uh, on the next video. I hope you guys will watch. Uh, subscribe to my channel, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.